I have prepared this video especially for witches and the Wiccan curious. Let's talk about what fire represents to you. Eternity, destruction, or rebirth. Creation, maybe communication. Passion, fury, or a gentle illumination and warmth. If you're identifying with Mars, Pluto, or the Sun, you Aries, Leo, or Sagittariuses, perhaps fire means something special to you. Let's talk about what air represents to you. There are 25 sextillion molecules in every exhalation of breath. The beginning of life, the end of life, our first breath to our last breath, an exchange of electrons. It carries energy. It carries emotional molecules. It carries sound, fragrance, and intelligence. Air. It's seen as the element of seers. Hindu call it prana. Astara believers will hold it especially endearing during the spring equinox. If you're a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or you identify with Mercury or Jupiter, chances are air is especially important to you. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about sigils because chances are if you're working with air or fire, you're probably also working with sigils. Sigils are symbols that are charged with something that is significant. They can be spiritual or they don't necessarily have to be spiritual. In alchemy, this is air or this. In runic, this is air. Celtic symbol for air would be this. American Indian symbol for air would be this. Fire in alchemy would be this. Fire in runic would be this. This is called a torch or a ken rune. And fire in Celtic would be this. Or in American Indian, you have the seven rays, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, or this. Does this remind you of Target? Does this remind you of Panera Bread? So why are we talking about sigils when we are making a video about air and fire? Well, chances are, much like in the same way you use ashes from some of your workings to put in a gri-gri bag, you are carrying with you a resonance or a signature or a portion of the power in your working. But the powers that you're using, because they are not omnipotent or omnipresent, much like a battery, the power will fade and it's only transferable for a short period of time. So let me just preface this by saying that I love crystals. I love semi-precious stones. I love candles. I love incense. I love essential oils. I love curating my environment. I truly feel a vibration from different colors that I choose to wear. My son gave me this piece of copper and I really enjoy wearing it. So why am I linking these things together? What am I trying to convey here? <laughs> it's that when you're doing a working and you are attaching a power or a signature or a spirit, and if I said unclean spirit, I know that there would be some who would immediately be offended. So I'm trying to choose my words very carefully. I keep going back within myself saying, let's just stick to the facts and keep things honest, keep things real. When you're doing a ritual and you're raising the vibration and 
front of yourself, in front of your altar, whether or not you're inviting assistance, whether or not you are working through divination, whatever it is you think you're doing, whatever it is you know you're doing, the bottom line is you are attaching a significance to an item. You are venerating an item because it is reminding you of your intention? Or are you venerating an item because you realize that what you're working for or what you're working with or who you're working with is assisting you, whether or not you are knowingly or unknowingly inviting a presence to work with you, whether or not you call these companions ancestors or spirit guides or angels or I want you to continue to listen to me. I want you to just hear me out. So when you're doing these things to create a signature and you're placing this vibration on an item, you are creating a signature in the spirit realm. And you know that, you obviously know that, or you don't know that. I don't know what you know or what you agree with or what you don't agree with. Here's the thing. When you have the sigil or the crystal or the stone or the button or the seashell or the shoelace or the pin or whatever it is, or you are using this to create a signature by your own intention or by assistance, you've charged this thing with power. I'd like to just ask you two questions, not to start an argument or for any other reason, just to be thought provoking. Why exactly does the Bible refer to Lucifer as the prince of the air? Second question, what does the baptism of fire mean to you? I want to share with you an encounter I had when I was baptized in fire, when I was baptized in Holy Spirit. I was watching a parade and I saw about 50 bagpipes coming down the street. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. Holy Spirit rode on the sound waves of these bagpipes and Holy Spirit penetrated my flesh and I felt the weight of God's glory. And it was so magnificent. I felt heat all over my body, but it wasn't painful. I felt the indwelling and outdwelling of Holy Spirit. Nobody was praying for me. Nobody laid hands on me. I wasn't seeking God. It was remarkable. <laughs> when you carry the power of Holy Spirit, you trump every other power. Magnificent heat covered my body. I felt Holy Spirit outdwelling, indwelling. Holy Spirit was swirling around me, covering me, holding me, filling me. When I encountered Holy Spirit, I knew I didn't want anything else. I didn't want anyone else. I didn't want to work for anything else. I wanted to be His. When Holy Spirit fell on Jesus' disciples, they had tongues of fire over their head. They were all speaking in tongues, and everyone who was looking at them, they thought that they were drunk because they were just acting so overwhelmed. They were consumed with Holy Spirit, and there, everyone who was observing them thought these people must be drunk, but they were just filled with the power of Holy Spirit. And you know what? When you first get filled with the power of Holy Spirit, it is euphoric. It's better than any drug you could take. It's better than, just think of the most awesome feeling you've ever felt before, times at times a thousand, and that's what it's like to be filled with Holy Spirit. I love you, and I want you to be baptized in holy fire. John the Baptist, he used to baptize people in water. And then he said, there's somebody who's coming who's going to baptize in Holy Spirit in fire. And this is the same guy that when he was a little baby inside his mama's belly in his mother's womb, when he felt Jesus near him, 
in his mommy's womb, he leapt in the womb because he knew Jesus was in close proximity as not even a newborn, as a baby still in his mama's womb. I'm not looking to convert you to Christianity. I would like to introduce you to the ways of Jesus. The way of Jesus and the yoke of Jesus is light. Let him do all the work. Just have fun with Holy Spirit. The only one that you have to listen to is Holy Spirit. Keep your rocks, keep your candles, keep your incense, keep your essential oils, keep growing magnificent plants, keep studying herbology, create your synergies in your diffuser, do everything that you love unto the Lord and include Holy Spirit. It's very common for somebody to say, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. That's great. Just make sure you're following Holy Spirit. Some of you may believe in white magic or black magic, but whether or not you have a right-handed practice or a left-handed practice, they both have one thing in common, which is they're both outside of the will of God. If you carry Jesus inside of you, you can walk through the most horrible smelling situations and you will come out smelling like roses. You will not even smell like the smoke that tried to consume you. Jesus said that perfect religion was helping homeless children, helping widows, helping those who are less fortunate. Those are the things that Jesus called true religion. You're spiritual. You got this. Investigate. Investigate what I'm talking about. Call it Christianism. I don't know. Just try something different. Isn't that what life is all about? Growing and trying new things and expanding your horizons, expanding the way you think? Tend to your garden. Check out the Bible. Start with John and just ask Holy Spirit to read it with you. Just see what happens. I started this video with sigils, and I'm going to end this video with a sigil. My sigil. It's an infinity sign. It's got a heart in the node, which is the now or the everything. And it has a cross for Jesus. Because he is the center of my everything. Yay!